Hello, I am Nick, and you are you, and thank you for buying the ISB 3.3. Twa, point twa. Um, it's going to be fun, it's going to be fun. I realise that the tutorial videos and the demo videos are from pretty much version 1, excuse me, and that's not ideal, they need to change, they need to be updated, so I'm doing them again. I'm going to do a bunch more, and I'm just going to cover everything that should should already be covered. Firstly, um, how to set it up, and then after that, I'm going to just go through each node group um, as closely as possible to let you know what every pretty much every slider does. So for this one, we're just going to start off with how to set it up. So once you open um, the master download file, you've got over here. You've got a hidden group that says master made with version 3.2, and here we have the plane in the way so we need to remove that and it's just because I got the camera in the wrong place so there's all the materials and they've all got the subdivisions off so you can just whack them on if you want to preview them but the only difference between these it says ISB 3.2 obviously this is 3.3 now is there's one new thing which is important and a big change but it's just these color custom color and custom roughness it, um, yeah, so that's the only difference between these guys and the 3.3. So I'm just going to close that down. The text, by the way, it says what it is. is a hidden layer as well. Hidden group, sorry. So let's bring the plane black. Bring the plane, plane back. Um, yeah, and that's what you'll see when you open up the window. This plane has already been set up, but let me show you what to do when you're appending the material. I already have a plane. Um, as my thing. So first off we need to append the material so it's in my quick menu but file append and then I'm already in the right folder so just point it to wherever you downloaded that the master file double click material uh, scroll down a bit <coughs> the master oh master um, so shift A mesh plane Add a plane and then RX90. So we're just going to rotate it to face the camera. And you could instantly put a subdiv on, but it's going to do that. And the only, there are ways around that you can because it's got no geometry between here and here, these two vertexes. So it's just going to round it unless you say no and you just you tell it basically, I don't want those corners. Um, but what I would normally do is first of all, before I attach a subdiv is right uh, one two three and then you got enough subdivisions so that when you do turn it on it's only rounding them and again if you do want to get rid of that control r i should have said that sorry loop cut and then you can do that just to remove it if it bothers you that much now when we apply the material it's going to look bad man it's going to look real bad it looks awful but that's absolutely understandable and expected given the subdivisions we have so first off we just need to give it some whack four once you've subdivided thrice four does the job five is just a bit you know cleaner now this is because i don't know why this happened but for some reason uh no, I do know why this happens. It's been for a very, very important reason. I don't know why this happens. Not great. This is because the master file you open, the plane is already set up. It's unwrapped in the right way, and it's had all its transforms applied. So because we've rotated on the x-axis, it's no longer as it was when it entered the scene. So we need to apply those transforms. And to do that, control A, and then click that one there. All transforms, and then... As if by magic, bush, everything back to normal. There you go. All right. So that's what you need to do. It's very important to apply your transforms when you are happy with your shape. Now, not all walls are in a straight line. You're going to want a corner. I wouldn't recommend putting it on a cube because there are a lot of sides you're not going to see. And you only ever see two sides of a wall. So what I would say, if you want a wall and a corner, is tab into edit mode, just double click to select 
this entire row of edges and then extrude on the Y axis by pressing E, Y or whichever axis you prefer. What's important is this needs to be unwrapped and we need to copy as much as we can roughly. It's not doesn't need to be perfect but just we need to give it the same amount of subdivisions because you'll see when we go back it's all dragged out like that. So what we must do is uh, edit mode A to select all your faces, press U and cube projection and when we go back everything will be in order like that. Okay now this little weird thing is happening this is like a recurring nightmare this mid-level stay at zero don't worry about that it's, it's default zero or it will be so yeah so you, there you go the important steps are to apply your transforms give it some geometry and also um, cube projection if you're using a cylinder then obviously might be an idea to go with cylinder projection. Um, smart UG, yeah, smart projection works. Also, when I was doing a Hogwarts scene, sometimes smart UV gave me better results than cube or cylinder. So, you know, mess around. But cube is how it's initially set up because it's kind of like a wall. Um, and, yeah, that's... I think that's everything you need to know about setting it up. Cube projection, apply your transforms, give it subdivs. Bosh! Okay, it's, you're ready to play around with it now, and that's going to be the next one, which is we're going to look at the main shape node group. It's going to take a little bit because there's a bit, but this is the meat of, of the ISB. This is where you basically make the vast majority of the shapes before you use the additive node groups to affect the shape you create here. So I will see you in the next one. Farewell.